We can easily show a complex number on a 2D plane in which the real part is shown on the x-axis and the imaginary part B is shown on the y-axis. For example, this point is 3, it's a real number, and this point is 2i, which is an imaginary number. And this red point shows a complex number, which is 3 plus 2i. So, I have a question here. What is the magnitude of a complex number? As you can see, the magnitude of this number, 3, is 3 units, and the magnitude of this one is 2. How can we calculate the magnitude of this number, this complex number? To find the magnitude of any complex number, you can use this formula. Add the squares of the two real and imaginary parts and take their square roots. For example, the magnitude of this complex number is the square root of 9 plus 4, which is the square root of 13. Now think about how we can calculate the angle between the direction of our complex number with the x-axis, which is the real axis. We can use the definition of tangent of theta, which is b over a, the imaginary part over the real part. And in this example, 3 plus 2i, it is 2, the imaginary part, over 3, which is the real part. And to find theta, we can use the inverse function of tangent, and the answer is 33 degrees. We can also write the real part of our complex number in this form, the square root of 13 times cosine of 33 degrees. And also we can write the imaginary part as the square root of 13 times sine of 33 degrees. And this is another form in which we can write our complex number. As you can see, it consists of the square root of 13, which is this magnitude, and we have a parenthesis consisting a real part and an imaginary part, and they are expressed by cosine of this angle and also the sine of this angle. The cosine shows actually the real part, and the sine is related to the imaginary part. As you have already seen, Sometimes complex numbers behave like vectors, and sometimes we can treat them as vectors, but not always. Let's see why. This point on our two-dimensional plane can show a complex number, which is 2 plus 3i. It can also show the end point of a vector. Now, consider another complex number and also another vector on this plane, which is minus 2i plus j, or minus 2 plus i and add it to the vector or the complex number. If we add this vector to the previous one, we can get 4j. The only thing that we have done for the vector is that we have added the two i components, the x components, and also we have added the j or the y components, and the answer is 4j. For our complex numbers, we add the real parts and also the imaginary parts, and the answer is 4i. It somehow resembles the componential form we talked about in the vectors. Now, let's consider another example. Here we have the same vector and the same complex number, but now we want to multiply them by this point and this vector. We can write the multiplications like this. For the vector, we have a dot product, and for complex numbers, we have a simple multiplication. The answer of the dot product is 3, which is a scalar and is not a vector anymore. But the answer to the complex number is minus 3 plus 2i, which is still a complex number. And as you can see, they are different. So we can conclude that vectors and complex numbers are different entities but sometimes they act like each other as we saw in the addition example. This point is our new complex number, minus 3 plus 2i. If you pay attention to the direction of the first vector we had, 2i plus 3j, and associate another vector to our new complex number, you can see that multiplication by i has rotated the first vector by 90 degrees. To make sure these two vectors are perpendicular, we can actually find the dot product and find it to be zero and shows that these two vectors are perpendicular. 
So we can safely say that complex numbers are not vectors, but sometimes behave like them. Actually, complex numbers form a kind of field. A field can roughly speaking be defined as a set of numbers that are close under these operations. Within the set of complex numbers, we can use these operations and find the result to be in the same set. In fact, a field is a self-contained structure. For example, we can have a field for real numbers and also a field for complex numbers. But vector spaces are different. They are defined on a field. They can be defined on complex numbers or real numbers. We can add vectors or actually multiply them by a scalar and find another vector and it forms a kind of vector space. But our scalars are elements of the field the vector space is defined on. When we want to talk about vector multiplication, we need to define another space which is called the inner product space which is not built in. For example, for the set of complex number, multiplications lies in the same set of numbers and we don't need any other spaces. But if we find a dot product or inner product of two vectors, the answer is not a vector and it is a scalar. So as you can see, complex numbers and vectors are different. Now suppose that Z1 is 2 and Z2 is another complex number which is 2 plus 2i. If I multiply these two complex number, I find it to be 4 plus 4i. I want to know what the effect of Z2 on Z1 is. We can check it in terms of magnitude and angle. First we can see that the magnitude of Z2 is 2 times square root of 2. It shows that when we multiply z2 by another number like z1, it can scale it by 2 times the square root of 2. For example, in this example, the magnitude of our first number was 2, and now it's 2 times 2 square root of 2. We can also find the angle of z2, which is 45 degrees or p over 4. And as you can see in the picture, when Z2 is multiplied by another number, can rotate it by 45 degrees. Now, let's check it for another complex number. This is what we expect. We expect the magnitude to be scaled by 2 times the square root of 2, and also the angle to be rotated by 45 degrees. We do some calculations, and we see that the answer is minus 4, which is a real number. Our initial magnitude was the square root of 2, and we can see that the final result, the final magnitude is 4, which is the product of square root of 2 by 2 times the square root of 2. And it's obvious that the angle between minus 1 plus i and the result is 45 degrees, which means that our complex number has been rotated by 45 degrees. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about another form of writing complex number, which is very useful and can help us do a lot of things with complex numbers.